n. Welcome back to Cowork Radio. I'm Jane Walker Wood. And I'm Catherine Raymock. And we are here with UCSB professor and prolific business author, uh, John Greathouse. And if you want to send John some questions, email askjohn at Cowork Radio. And you can listen to on our website, iTunes, iHeart, and YouTube. How are you doing, John? I'm doing awesome. How about you? Oh, great. Of course, said uh, this is um, Women's History Month. It is. Uh, I'm just curious. Do you have any stories that have to do, and I'd love to hear if women are different kind of entrepreneurs than men, but do you have stories about women entrepreneurs? Well, we, I do. Um, and I love to tell these to my UC Santa Barbara students because we tend to know that a handful of women entrepreneurs, and they're, and they're wonderful women, but we only know a smaller number. And it's sort of the Oprah's, Sarah Blakely's. It's the same names, which, again, I love those people. But So I tried to bring other um, stories into my classroom. And one of my favorite stories is Martha Harper. And what you found about what you find out about Martha is like many women, what she ended up creating was just out of necessity. She she was forced to take a different path because in her day and age, she didn't have a choice. So just quickly, a lot of people haven't heard of Martha, so I'll give you a, a very quick um, rundown of, of what happened with her. She was actually rented out by her parents as a servant at the age of seven. This was Yeruses. not unusual. It would have been about the late 1870s. So again, it wasn't slavery. She was Caucasian, but um, that time period, just children were chattel, and you yeah, know, Abraham you could do it. Lincoln was uh, rented you, out. You could do it, yeah. So she, but fortunately for her, um, mentors matter in life, and she was so lucky to, to to basically clean the home of a doctor who took an interest in her. Obviously, saw she was bright. You know, he could see that this young, uneducated girl was not an idiot, and he actually um, took some time with her and, and taught her a little about a little bit about physiology. She would ask questions, and he would answer those questions. Um, and she she found out she was really interested in um, hair care. How does you know what is hair? How does it work? How do you work with hair? She decided um, that she wanted to be one of only seventeen women to enter the paid workforce and try to control her own destiny. That was in eighteen ninety. When you say seventeen wow. women, you mean seventeen percent? Oh, seventeen percent. Seventy percent of women were paid in the workforce. They all worked in uh-huh. some regard, but only seventeen percent. And she was one of the few that wanted to control her economic destiny. She didn't want to be beholden to to a man. Um, so she finds herself 31 years old. She's a maid, and again, she's had no formal education. Um, she had saved $360, which is a fortune, and considering how, how little she was paid. she had, Her life savings, she took it to Rochester, New York, and she opened the first public hair salon. Now, that sounds not revolutionary at all, but what you have to realize that in the 1800s, only wealthy people had their hair done, in quotes, and it was always done in the home. Like, the thought of doing, of having someone wash your hair in public was Well, there was wasn't the access to hot water like we have Exactly, now. and cleanliness wasn't the issue, you know, was it like it is today. But just that idea of doing that in public was sort of scandalous. Like, you don't wash people's hair and cut it in public. And she felt like, no, I'm going to try to bring a new service um, to, to, to women. And and she had to sue the landlord to allow him to rent the building to her because she didn't have a man to sign the lease. And she found a, a nice male lawyer to stood beside her and said, no, you will give this woman a lease. So she had to do that. Her business was totally failing despite her you know, vim and vigor and, and, and her work ethic. But she got lucky again, and but she played off that luck. So she ended up, just by happenstance, renting her hair salon was right next door to a music teacher. So the the women that would drop their their children off for music lessons would do what? Well, they would kind of just stand around, mill about. You know, this was in Rochester. It's cold. And so she would invite them in. And she would just say, oh, just, you know, have a seat, have a seat. And then because you got to remember, again, having your nails done, your hair done was not something people did. And then she would say, oh, do you mind if I practice on you? Can I do your nails? And then slowly but surely she got them comfortable with having their hair, quote, done and having their nails done. Um, and, and that whole premise of a, of a barbershop shop slash hair salon becoming a place for p- people to come and share and g- kind of gossip and talk really started with Martha. That's an incredible Isn't story. It? So she could have looked at this and said, oh, well, she's women who wouldn't mill about the front of my store. Like, I'm trying to get customers. But instead, she, she invited them in. She got them comfortable. Then they were addicted. They became customers, uh-huh. right? So anyway, that would be a fun little story if that's kind of where it ended. But Martha had bigger plans for, for herself and, and for other women than that. And so she decided that she wanted to I'll give other women the same power that she had because now she was making some money and she could call her own shots. And so she she teamed up with women all over the country 
so that they could open their own salons. And she, what she did was something revolutionary. She franchised the idea. Mm-hmm. So before that, everyone, when they expanded, would just open another salon. They would own it. They would hire somebody, and they would pay them a salary. She said, no, I want you to own it. I'll give you the skincare products, the hair care products. I'll train you. I'll teach you. She actually invented the um, shampoo chair, like the chair that tilts back. Yeah. So, and she didn't patent it because she wanted other women to use that that patent. That would have been a very valuable patent for her. Had anybody franchised before? No. Was it, it was... the I, the idea, you know, the his, history will is sort of a little bit um, checkered. There, there's some people that will claim other models were quote French. She was the first. That really was looking out for what the franchisee. What was the name of it? It was. It got to be over five hundred salons. Um, I don't actually. I think it was just called Martha Harper Studios or Martha Harper. She had extreme. If you Google her, she had hair down to her feet. She literally did. <laughs> of course, she was four foot eight. And she probably was in that day. She probably was about four feet. You know tall. that would. I'm. I'm actually thinking what a great movie that would make. It would make yeah. a good movie. It, it, it really would. And and she again. I think the reason they say she had the first uh, retail franchise was because. She truly was giving, allowing them to run their own business and trying to help them in that enterprise. I'm sure there's other people that teamed up and did joint ventures and little things like that, but she was the first one to roll it out as a new business model. I so it's a love, wonderful story. I love that and story. Course, before the women got the vote. You know, I was just reading today that uh, the women in Switzerland didn't get the vote federally till 1971. Oh. Mm. Not amazing. Wow. Well, and of course, Saudi Arabia, 2015, municipal. They still can't vote. Well, no, they have municipal rights oh, now. Oh, wow. We've, we've come a long way, but uh, there's still a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, International Women's History Month, and we're talking with John Greathouse. He is here every week answering our social media questions. You can send one in. Go to coworkradio.com. Uh, John, you are listening, by the way, to KZSB, 1290 AM, and we will see you next week. All right. I'll be here. Thanks. Thank you.